Greetings, viewers. Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment, doing another Skyrim sort of quest walkthrough video. I haven't done these in a while. I just recently did the one on Valthum, and I have another one that I will be producing later on, or in the near future. And if I've done this correctly, we should be seeing a video every four days, and I'm still holding to that. Um, this is a quest. It's called Laid to Rest, and you can get it done relatively quickly. There are two events, two or three, four, I don't know, a couple of events, and then a major battle where you complete the quest. And this is kind of a sad quest, but, and kind of a grim one too, but again, sorry for using so many buts, but, 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 it is an interesting quest, and it involves vampires, those dirty, blood-sucking, kind of nasty creatures that can give you some diseases that you really don't want. But, again, I digress. And we will get on with Laid to Rest. This quest starts when you enter the inn at Morathal and talk to Jonah the innkeep. And don't talk to Lurbuk. He's kind of a jerk. And you go talk to Jonah the innkeep and she will inform you. Welcome to the Moor side. If you need anything, I'll be around. Good day. Rogar's house? It burned down not too long ago. It's a real pity about his wife and kid. The screams woke half the town. Most folk won't go near it now for fear it's cursed. Rogar claims it was a hearth fire. Some folks say Rogar started it himself. That's what they say. See, he's living with Alva now. That started the day after the fire. It ain't right moving in with a new love the day after your kin die like that. Aye. Our Jarl would sure like to know if he did, though. Might even pay to find out. Now that the quest is started, you gotta go to talk to the Jarl at High Moon Hall. And the Jarl will then allow you to continue on searching for information about the quest. So let's get on with the conversation with the Jarl. You will enter High Moon Hall and talk to Jarl Ingrid Ravencrone. So, life has brought you to Mortha. Rogar's house fire? Well, he lost his wife and daughter in the blaze. My people believe it to be cursed now. Who am I to gainsay them? Rogar blames his wife for spilling bear fat in the fire. Many folk think he set the fire himself. Lust can make a man do the unthinkable. The ashes were still warm when he pledged himself to Alva. On rumor and gossip? No. But you, a stranger, might find the truth for us. Sift through the ashes that others are too fearful to touch. See what they tell you. Should you prove him guilty or innocent, I will reward you. Krogar's fate. When you investigate the burned out house, you need to do it at night. So if it's daytime, you're going to have to wait. And in waiting, at night, you'll wind up finding uh, something interesting in the house. Enter the burnt out house to meet Helgi, a little girl ghost. Who's there? <laughs> Helgi. 
But father says I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Are you a stranger? You know him? He made my favorite dolly, but I can't find her. Are you sure you aren't a stranger? The smoke woke me up. I was hot and I was scared, so I hid. Then it got cold and dark. I'm not scared anymore, but I'm lonely. Will you play with me? Okay, let's play hide and seek. You find me and I'll tell you. We have to wait for nighttime though. The other one is playing too, and she can't come out until then. I can't tell you. She might hear me. She's so close. If you can find me first, I can tell you. Actually, finding Helgi's little ghost that's hiding is easy. You go behind the cabin, and there are some hills and area here where there is a small grave, and it's kind of sad. See right over here, there are some grave markers and a grave. Can't, you can't talk to Helgi because there is a bad person in the woods here. And it's Laylet. And you can beat her up pretty quickly. She's a pretty weak vampire. And then you get who she is. Laylet is the other. And then you can talk to Helgi. You found me! Laylet was trying to find me too. But I'm glad you found me first. Layla was told to burn mommy and me, but she didn't want to. She wanted to play with me forever and ever. She kissed me on the neck, and I got so cold that the fire didn't even... Layla, she thought she could take me and keep me, but she's, she can't. She's a I'm vampire. All burned up. I'm tired. I'm going to sleep for a while now. How you talk to Thorin about his wife, Laylet, and he's got some interesting things to say. Laylet, I thought she left to join the Stormcloaks. Oh, my poor Laylet. She began to spend a lot of time with Alva, yet just a week before, she despised her. In fact, the night she disappeared, she was supposed to meet Alva. Alva told me later that she never showed up. I never got to tell her goodbye. You think Alva? But that means... Ye gods, you think Alva is a vampire? No, you're wrong. You must be wrong. Leilet may have met her fate out in the marsh. I refuse to believe Alva had anything to do with this. There is no way you can prove it to the Jarl. I hope Alva is not what you think. So all of this is kind of tied to Alva for some reason. Thorin's wife hated her but became a vampire. And I'm guessing that little Helgi would have become a vampire due to Laylet if she had not burned to death. And so we're going to walk over to Alva's house and pick the lock and see what's going on. Now, if you do this, you probably need to watch out. Otherwise, the guards are going to get you. And I'm going to show you a little bit of what happens once I open Alva's house here. And that's easy enough to break into. I'm going to put a save here just in case. And then once I lockpick Alva's house, we can continue on. And her house, no guards around that I see. And it's an apt lock, so easy enough to pick. And we're in. <laughs> the way we're attacked by Hrorgar, but... The, the Morithal Stop Guard right wants there. to arrest us. So, hey, any chance I could talk you into overlooking this? All right. But you just and it works. Yourself. 
Next time, I might not be so lenient. Search Horgar, or Horgar, or whatever. Um, gold, key to Alv's house. Uh, some other stuff here, which is not bad. Now let's take a look around. And the, over here on the table, there's some nice gold. You can steal the gold. If you take the book, it's stolen property. You can't sell it unless you have a fence. But you can steal the gold and it still spends like anything else. They don't segregate the gold. Now let's take a look in this chest. Again, anything is going to be stolen except the gold. So let's go down into the cellar. Depending on what time you arrive, Alva will be resting in her coffin. But it's night, so she's out there, and you can read Alva's journal. My life is dreary. Where is my prince come to rescue me? Where is my bold Nord warrior to sweep me off my feet? I met a man today when picking night flowers. He is exciting and exotic. We kissed in the moonlight. It was so romantic. I'm going to see him again tonight. Now I understand the true colors of night. Movarth has shown me the true black of night and the true red of blood. He has promised me a feast of blood, blah, blah, blah. Laylette came to visit me tonight. She slaked my thirst. I hidden her away to be my handmaiden. Movarth has confided his grand plan to me. I am to seduce the guardsmen once at a time and make them my slaves. Horgarth is another thing that, you know, she's using to protect her. She, he's a thrall, and she has plans to be this kind of leader and take over the town and turn everyone into cattle, essentially. And Horgarth's family, um, Lilette was supposed to kill them, but she liked Helgi and tried to turn the girl and something went wrong and you know Helgi became a ghost Helgi died the house burned down and now the stranger is in town which is your character looking into the fire and you know this whole plan is kind of interesting and intricate and um, well, Alva will have to be careful. And again, if you came during the day, you'd have to fight Horgar and possibly Alva in the cellar. Usually she pops up, but it's nighttime, so let's go back out and talk to the Jarl. Okay, now we're back to talk to the Jarl and inform her of what has gone on. And you can get this all done relatively quickly if you stay at night and talk to the Jarl here. Not. Alva? I didn't think she had it in her. I assume you have proof? Can't go making accusations like that without proof. So it's true. The traitorous bitch. Morthal owes you a debt. Here. You were promised a reward for solving the crime, but I need one more favor from you. Morthal is still in danger. The journal mentions Movarth, a master vampire I thought was destroyed a century ago. I'll gather together some able-bodied warriors to clean out Movarth's lair. They'll be waiting outside for you to lead them. Now is a good time to end the conversation with the Jarl and go join the party. Again, you can get this quest done relatively quickly. And let's go meet the party. The party is composed of a couple of townspeople and Thonair, who he Lele. wants to kill the I vampire, the and they're going to wife. do it whether vengeance you come with Lele. them or not. And yeah, We're these are not able-bodied fighters. These are a bunch of putzes who think they can fight. So it's easier to run to Morthal's lair than the fast travel, but I'm going to fast forward the actual travel 
to the layer. Now we're at Morvarth's lair, and we gotta wait for the other guys to come. I'm just a poor man trying to make a living. They may be cowards, but I'm not. I'll go with you. I suppose you're right. I'm not a fighting man. Go! And avenge my Laylet for me. Bonier admits he's not a fighter, and yeah, you're better off going it alone. So let's get on with ending this mission. Now I'm going to go stealth mode through this a little bit. And switch over to the bow and go sneaky sneaky first person. For a reason. Because there are two creepy spiders and this is where things start with these two giant spiders. I want to take them out, and I want to take someone else out first. So these two spiders, I'm going to kill this one. And there we go, dead. And the next spider, I'm going to locate here and take a look. Up, oh, got to move around here. There is the spider and try and get a good shot in and dead. Now let's get down to the bottom here, and there will be a passage that I will kind of sneak through, and I'm going to just jump down here and walk through. Ah, I can't get my arrow back. I really don't want to carry the venom. Nothing around here to see. And so let's go through the passage over here, nothing around, uh, dead spider, yeah, I'm messing around here, but this passage will lead you through to a guard, and I'm going to take the guard down with a headshot, and this is a beautiful headshot right here, and zap, boom, oh yeah, beautiful, and now we can go forward. There is another passage over to the left, which is the one you'll have to go through. And the reason I'm going to go sneaky after I check the guard out, the vampire thrall, gold and I can't get my arrow back. That sucks. Now, nothing else here, some wine. And then we're going to go up this passage, and there's a guy who's stealing from the dead. And I'm going to shoot him very carefully with his head above the grave. And I sneak out here, and this guy can take a hit. So once I shoot him, even though I hit a headshot, yeah, he can take a hit. He's tough. So now with the arrow sticking out of his head, I put him down. And he was robbing a grave, so I'll see what he has, and then I'll fast forward to the next part of this event. Okay, some gold and I can get the arrows back. Now I'm going to fast forward to the next part. I mean, they're just stealing clothing here. And again, I'm going to just fast forward a little bit here. Okay, you're going to get to a split. Carefully and stealthily walk up to the high area here. There's some iron ore. Don't bother mining it. And you will get into the hall here and load an arrow and you will see... Molvarth here, and I'm just going to snipe him from up here. He can take a lot of hits. So let's zap him here. Boom. Molvarth Pinguin. And he's running around. He's, he's where are you? Where, uh, you know, he's freaking out. If you do this right, and you got a high sneak, you'll never be found, and you can something. just keep sniping him down.
even though Molvarth is dead, you don't want to go back to find the Jarl because it's a waste of your time. You want to explore this lair and try and take down this thrall mm. here who Nothing will eventually going. give up and start walking away. And once you can get a good shot, take her out and yeah, it's going to take a little bit, but it's worth it. Now that the Thrall is dead, you can jump down and search Molvarth, and you want to search the table. But first, let's see what Molvarth has, or whatever his name is. Gold, dust, boots, arrows, nothing. Really didn't have a lot. Now this table is messy, and I'm going to grab my arrow that I can take back, and I'm going to search the Thrall, and gold and my arrow's back, and an orcish dagger, which is pretty good. Now, when you search the table, do it first-person view. It's kind of messy, but there's a lot of gold scattered around and some potions. And, again, take the gold. Forget about everything else. Maybe potions are worth something, but, yeah, it's messy. I'm going to kind of fast-forward here through all this and move on to the next part. Now that you've taken all the gold and stuff from the table, you want to come up here to this passage, and yeah, you get attacked immediately by a vampire night stalker, and she is tough. And again, this is why I like using electrical in my attack. It takes down the magic of the opponent, and yeah, this guy's annoying. He's pretty cool and pretty tough too. But once you are done taking these people down, search the thrall, and eh, nothing worth taking except gold. Search the night stalker and ruby, vampire dust, armor, and boots. And now there's a book over here, Immortal Blood. Eh, don't want to read that. Uh, Ultimate Magic. An uh, apothecary chest or whatever, a quill. And let's see, what's nothing here of value and a barrel. Now, what you want to do is in some of the darker areas, if you have candlelight, you want to cast it because there is something in this darkness. And I'm going to cast not destruction, alteration, candlelight, and voila. A master chest. And there is some nice stuff in here, I hope. There is a ebony bow, gold, scroll of dread zombie, elven arrows, a steel helmet, and a novice robe of alteration. There is nothing else here, so I will fast forward to the next event. Across from the ramp is a passage, and you want to go up this passage, and it will take you to a room where right over there is Alva, and she's asleep, so let's take her down. What do you think you're... Apparently someone's not happy with my having killed Alva. And this is uh, another vampire night stalker. And yeah, that was a relatively easy takedown. But God, I hate magic users. Let's see what she has. Ah, uh, book, ruby, dust, robe, whatever. Nah. Now, again, this is where you kind of want to cast a spell that will allow you to see, i.e. you want to cast um, 
a candlelight spell. Let's take a look around this room here. I'm going to arm up my character first because I don't want to get jumped again. And there's a bed over here. Uh, what is their fascination with boots and footwear? Kind of weird. Got a foot fetish. Now, this is supposed to be a skill enhancement book. If you've already read a skill enhancement book like it, uh, one gold, that's it. Uh, yeah, if you read a skill enhancement book that's similar already, then you won't get the benefit. There's nothing here. So let's move on to the next event. Uh, behind the table and behind the um, platform, there is another uh, passage. You want to take that passage and it leads to a room here and a an archer i'm gonna shout at her i think nah, i'm just gonna close the distance she's not doing a lot of damage and after a couple hits she runs away oh my god oh my god ignore her and get back to searching this area there's some gold a uh, dwarven bow and a chair, and that's about it. There's nothing here. So go deal with the thrall, and let's take her down because now she's kind of ran away, and that pisses me off. Stand and fight. Where is she? Ah, uh, yeah, there she is. Let's take her down. Shout, stunner, bam! She's gone. And essentially, now you've gone through all the passages and areas involved in this event in Morthal's lair. There's really nothing here except some carts to hold some corpses. I'll show you by, oh, by using the uh, candlelight, and I'm going to fast forward after this to the end, which, again, you've done everything. Now it's time to finish this quest. You get to the top of the platform and have a nice conversation with Helgi. Mother's calling me. It's time for... You've avenged Helgi's death. And now the laid to rest quest is over. But you gotta get to the... Uh, Yarrow to get your reward. Go to the Yarrow and get your reward. You've killed Morthal. Well, by the eight, I didn't think he could do it. Now maybe we can put all this behind us. Take this as a token of our gratitude. There is room in my court for a new thane. It's an honorary title mainly. But there are a few perks someone like you could make use of. However, I could only grant the title to someone who is known throughout my hold. You help my people, and I'll make you my thane. Good luck. Then by my right as Jarl, I name you Thane of Yalmarch. Congratulations! I grant you this weapon from my armory to serve as your badge of office. I'll also notify my guards of your new title. Wouldn't want them to think you're part of the common rabble now. Since I already helped three people, I decided I'd become Thane. If you didn't help three people, can you can't become Thane. And, well, you know, you complete the quest. Some and that's the important part. Wizard. Now, the Jarl herself is pretty interesting. And she uh, has visions and stuff. There's rumors that she might be a vampire herself. Those are just rumors. This was a very interesting quest. And it's actually very easy to complete very quickly. You can do it in about 20 minutes. 
I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. As always, thanks for stopping by.